Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is probably one of my all-time favorite DIYs. It was easier than I thought, it looks gorgeous, if I do say so myself, and it was really inexpensive. So, let's get started. I've been wanting to do a Scrabble tile wall in my home for Ever, forever. I have an entire Pinterest board dedicated to just this beautiful look. But every time I try to either buy them from Etsy, they're so expensive and I wasn't sure how to make them and I always just procrastinate it. But I was at Dollarama here in Canada and I found four wood planks, square wood planks for a dollar twenty-five. So I thought that's super cheap. I'm gonna give it a try. These are actually wood, so I thought about painting them white. I saw a video from Sensational Finds. She did this using all Dollar Tree items, and she painted hers white, and they look fantastic, but I really wanted mine to look like real Scrabble tiles. So instead of stain, I'm using some dark wax. I'm using Annie Sloan's dark wax because I this is what I had. And I'm just using a sponge to rub it on the tile. I'm getting the sponge a little bit wet just so I'm not putting a ton of product on it. But to stain all of these took me under 20 minutes. So I spend hours with scrap pieces of paper trying to write out different combinations for the Scrabble letters using our family name. It was a nightmare and I couldn't figure it out. And finally, after I'm gonna say probably an hour and a half, maybe even two hours of just scrap trying to figure it out, my husband said, there's probably an app for that. And he took one second and he Googled it and it's like, it's like crossword puzzle app or crossword puzzle generator and you put in the words you want and it comes out with bazillion options for you. So. I feel dumb. But anyways, we figured out a great combination. I decided to use my Cricut to cut the letters and the numbers, not any special font, just the font that came with it. And then I peeled it off and stuck it on. But you can buy these letters from Michaels. They even have some at the Dollar Tree. Um, or you can create your own using a Sharpie pen, or you could print them off and do Mod Podge. There's so many options, and I'm gonna put links down below. Once I added all the letters and the numbers, I laid it out on the floor to get a really good idea of what it was going to look like, and it was massive. It's so big. So I added some dollar store picture frames just to fill in the space and have some of the new family photos we recently had done. They now have a place to go. Hanging all of this was done with 3M strips because because laziness and because if I made a mistake I could just move it around without making my walls look like Swiss cheese kind of obsessed with 3M strips but it's in a stairwell so it was so high so I had to go up on a very tall ladder I'm slightly afraid of heights hey reach for the stars you you can do it you could move the ladder but that's Ah! The ladder was my least favorite part, but the kids helped, they were passing me things, and I probably should have measured, I could have done it better, I probably should have leveled better, it doesn't matter, because I legit love this DIY project. It's probably one of my favorite ones I've ever done. It's so massive, it was so inexpensive, just over an hour to put together, and just over $30. I mean, that's crazy pants. And every time I walk by, I just like, <sighs> I just love it. I just love this thing so hard. I really totally recommend that you give it a try in your home. I'm gonna put a link down below to the, the crossword puzzle maker that I used and a lot of different DIYs that you can check out using different supplies. So you can get the same look no matter where you live, where you shop, if you have a Cricut, if you don't have a Cricut, if you want it white or black or blue, whatever it is. I'm gonna put links down below to lots of different ideas because I really think Everyone needs one of these in their home. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. I wanted to show you what a messy DIYer I am. This is all the garbage from the 3M strips I used to hang it. This is what my office looked like because the printer was broken. I was trying to print family photos. They were all blue and then for some reason they were all pink and I was trying to fix it and it was like crazy chaotic. I bought picture frames that were broken from the dollar store so I had to go back and I just trashed my whole house, but it's pretty. Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. So you guys know that I'm filming a TV show and it's been 
a really crazy experience. It's so fun. It takes a long time, way longer than I thought, like for one episode. It's an insane amount of time. But the thing I'm really finding about myself is that I don't work well with others. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm not exactly a people person, but um, it's been maybe 20 years since I've actually had to be around other people in a workplace. I had a job before I had children, but I was the only employee. So that's always a, a nice thing. I mean, I had corporate bosses, but I was alone in the office all day and I got to do whatever the heck I wanted. And then, you know, I, I worked at home with small children they don't, you just talk at them. They, you can't even understand half the words coming out of their mouths. And then, uh, you know, my own, my own husband and family I discuss, and a few friends and family I have conversations with, mostly through text message, but that's pretty much it when it comes to human interaction. So for the past month, I've had to speak to other humans all day long like 12 hours and I don't really know these people so I'm nice and my face hurts from smiling and I'm emotionally exhausted at the end of the day and I've also realized that I'm kind of a control freak there they everyone has their jobs and I'm like I'm like co constantly offering unsolicited advice and trying to like uh, offer direction and get involved and like help out and that's the last thing they want is any help from me you guys it's been an experience. <laughs> they hate me. I'm sure they all hate my guts. And I just didn't realize how uh, controlling I was. And my husband has planned a vacation for us coming up and I had no say because I've been gone and busy and, and I've, I haven't had any say and it's killing me inside. <laughs> I'm just like, where are we staying? Does it have enough beds? Did you book the dog? D did you find someone to take care of the lizard? And he just keeps saying, I've taken care of it, don't worry. And I'm like, but tell me every single detail so I know you haven't messed anything up. You know, and he hasn't, I'm sure he hasn't, has he? I don't know, because he won't tell me. He just keeps telling me that everything's fine. And so I'm feeling very stressed. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I had no idea I was a control freak. That is the point of this little end story. I had, n I was oblivious to the fact that I had control issues until these past couple of weeks. And um, it's just, it's, uh, are you a control freak? Put in the comments below. You might not even know it and you might be because that's a real thing apparently. I'll see you guys next time.